Extra, extra, read all about it. Get your news here. Extra, extra, 911 PTSD. Extra, extra, blinded by patriotism. The tragic comedy of Commander and Thief G.W. Chicken Little, a neocon chicken hawk pretender to be holy emperor of the world, who, blinded by jingo patriotism, enormous greed, and false faith, ends up just another crispy critter. Extra, extra, read all about it. An illustrated fable by Jaime Weso. Run, Henny Penny, before it's too late, and tell the people the Emperor has no feathers. Once upon a time, not so long ago, in a land not far away, superpower Cyclops, aging foreign policy enforcer for the United States of Denial, was out for a walk with Skull Baby and Pet World, both secure on stout chains, when a flag pick fell whoosh from the sky and stuck in his one big eye. He was, of course, ever after blinded by patriotism. The sky is falling, the sky is falling. Why does it hate us so much? And where are these awful flags coming from, he screamed. Who would dare do such a thing? Way back in his tiny mind, he faintly heard, who indeed but our own radical leaders, the Pied Pipers of Apocalypse. A sense of imperial disease arose within superpower Cyclops, but even though things were not quite right, he had a hot date that night and did not want to be late. With sad and tragic consequence for all, he failed to notice the angry, desperate graffiti scrawled across crumbling third world walls. That arrogant mistake eventually caused his own meteoric downfall. Superblind Liberty, Deputy Sheriff of the World, Queen of the Atomic Torch and Superpower Cyclops' main squeeze, heard him screaming on the run, Fear! Fire! Foe! Freedom is falling from the sky! Watch out for liberals and terrorists! She looked up, and whoosh! Sure enough, two flag picks stuck in her eyes. You're right, she said. The sky is falling, and I can't see freedom anymore. It must be the work of the enemy evil one! We're under attack, but where is it coming from, and what does it mean? We must quickly tell the Emperor even if he is just a dumb little egg with legs. Despite dire warnings, they only made a cell phone call and left a message on G.W. Chicken Little's oval answering machine, telling him that he was officially in charge of everything. Now, said the Cyclops, we have to team up fast, barbecue lots of babies, and raise hell on Earth as long as the God gas lasts. It's our destiny, and time is running out. So in spite of ominous threats and portentous signs, instead of tending to national security business, off they went to play with death angels and mushroom clouds and loot the world before anyone else could. Regardless of what they knew or say they did at the time, that left only G.W. Chicken Little, affectionately called Humpty W., newly appointed Emperor of the United States of Denial, on duty in the front office. While they were out ripping and romping, Humpty W. made a few trial decisions, and since it was such hard work, he had to take yet another chicken ranch vacation. Mount Foundin, Daddy's towering national landmark, took a big hit for G.W. smack dab in the public eye. Hey, G.W., the memo cried. Look out! Oh, someone is going to hit you hard with airplanes real soon. Oh, no, that's old news. Historical stuff, G.W. snorted and went off for a public relations strut, promoting voting rights for goats to little kids. When he actually got the new bad news, he was mentally rehearsing his outrageous assertion that terrorism is the inevitable righteous privatization of war. Even though everyone knows the simple solution to terror is not torture, but justice with due respect for all people, there is little excess profit in that. Whoa, what a big noise, G.W. whispered. Something just exploded way up high. Superpower Cyclops and Superpline Liberty were right. Freedom is falling from the sky. My, my, look at all that money. To arms, to arms, everyone to arms. Now spend as much as you can. Hooray, hooray, what a great day. We're off to the God Gas Lands. Give me my gun, I have become the big bad rooster of the world. It is my calling as the cocksure prophet, so you all better just watch out, he crowed. 
Since the sky is falling, the inn must be near, and my job is to bring it on fast in one of the slickest barnyard swindles of our whole colonial past. That way me and my hallelujah buddies will pocket all the windfall cash. On the sly, we can also supply canned propaganda to the major media networks as amused, and make lots of scratch selling body prosthetics during war shots on the fold nightly news. Humpty W., the young wannabe chicken hawk outlaw poet, still only an egg with legs, hooted and hollered like a rodeo rider on his way to becoming the new war boy commander and thief. Pumped up on rooster juice, he mounted his diplomacy and headed toward the crossroads of Western civilization to bomb Stone Age cultures back to the beginning of time. Never mind they were mostly poor, innocent, and essentially defenseless against the greatest war machine the world has ever known. He claimed it was okay to get even if at least ten times the number of casualties paid for oh someone's disastrous attack. That way he could maintain credibility as the most ruthless rooster to ever steal a country or a vote and catch a little target practice too before promoting the next illegal invasion. So backed by the Argyle group of weaponized chicken socks purveyors chanting mindless neocon notions in the name of dead terror victims, Humpty Duppy has set forth to cram peace, liberty, freedom, democracy, and depleted uranium down the throats of all less fortunate folk. You're either with us or against us, G.W. Gloward. Mine is bigger than yours, so bring them on now and let's see who's a coward. Know what I mean? I hope plenty of high-value targets remain by the time I get there. And where is that plastic turkey anyway? Come a tie yippee 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 yay yippee yay he cackled, swooping down for Thanksgiving Day rounds. Hey, wait a minute, someone snarled from the roving cell phone glued to his back. Rewind that photo op for the next video war. Chickenoint a pre-religious awakening inevitably came to the weird little bird Humpty W. Stimulated by bombing camels and babies in addition to men and women of all ages and pumped up on more rooster juice, the immature egg with legs hatched into a fully fledged neocon chicken hawk. Upon coming out, GW was greeted by three self-appointed pro-life advisors, Pee Wee and Dick, who ascended with flag picks from the basement of shadowy government. Before he even glimpsed the truth, G.W. was blinded by jingo patriotism and initiated into the Royal Masters of the Skull Society. Who and what were the pro-life advisors? What did they want? More later. At the moment of emergence, the pro-life death masters taught G.W. the limitless wonders of privatizing public capital, commonly called piracy. They also regaled him with the fundamental USD golden family dream. Pay now, go into debt, and die before you own it. GW was then irresistibly tempted by the promise of big money, pure and simple, for himself and his rich and influential flock members, the haves and have some mores. Finally, they reveal the super secret, double cross knowledge of false faith, from which he learned that deceiving spiritual belief is the most effective deceit of all, because it enables vastly rewarding religious wars. However, they cautioned, never get drafted, pull family rank and party at home. If anyone complains, just claim your new age higher political power is saving you for the future. That lie works every time. Totally blinded by jingo patriotism, corrupted by enormous greed, and seduced by false faith, what more could you hope for in a drugstore cowboy? Imperial snakes, patriotically robed, surrounded GW as he strode over half a world of poor children, mostly in the southern hemisphere, clutching his bag of hard-earned money and holding out his double cross like a scepter. His preemptive gang rushed forth to bring United States of denial ways of life with democracy, liberty, freedom, and hegemony to the world. It is essential for the U.S. of D to have all it needs and take whatever it wants for the protection and benefit of the earth. We are the most equal, so we get the most first. This should quickly enlighten those smart nations to the basic values of our military capital fascist domination. Get used to it, he spouted. 
The aggressive spread of neoliberal democracy means that multinational companies inflame worthless disposable consumer desires and exploit unjust trade and labor laws while scornfully denying critical environmental needs. Full speed ahead then for global development and nature by God be damned. Use it up fast because time is running out according to our Indo-World Armageddon plan. Big talk, but what would you expect from a former chicken cheerleader inflated by foul ideas and chicken seat? Unfortunately, GW soon believed he was a supernatural being, not just packaged chicken meat. He easily convinced himself that he acted as God's own celestial mailman, delivering bigoted family values, bogus liberty, and counterfeit freedom to the world from far beyond the stars. However, his power-deluded war dream turned out to be just another flashback memory. Fly Egg Stealth and the pro-life advisors Pee Wee and Dick, along with coalition partner Nemesis, Lord of Absolute Corruption, completely and irrevocably beyond all hope of redemption, initiated, subjugated, inculcated, infiltrated, obliterated, and flatulated GW's narrow mind. The first big lesson was a brain stuffing of totally occult neocon chicken hawk ideology and methods of achieving chicken control of the world. Deck began the instruction. Most of all, they hate our freedom to bomb the hell out of anybody, anywhere, and they hate our cynical hypocrisy too. How dare they? Remember, GW, our government is at liberty to do whatever it takes to protect you, including kill you, to prevent your capture or conversion by the enemy evildoers. P went on. Freedom means freedom from the choices and rights that conflict with your safety and security in a profitable and perpetual war on emotions. Don't forget, chickens are dumb, and you cannot misunderestimate the lowest common denominator phenomenon. Hate of the unknown other is the most powerful, fearful, lowest common denominator of all. In a pinch it will certainly save your political ass. We added, the most important secret of this lesson though is that lives repeated often enough turn into facts, true or not, and soon create new truth. Remember these things well, GW, because they are necessary for the continued growth of our oppressive empire and the spread of new dealerships for WMD or weapons of mass murder or whatever you call your latest demonized weapons of mass hysteria, Dick concluded in a heart-wrenching frenzy. Gun Gas Chick, as the reinvented GW liked to be called, wanted to corner world cooking oil so badly he seized his first chance to demonstrate absolute resolve not to change his mind in spite of reality. He was determined, in fact, to always deny truth in the face of overwhelming lies. Never apologize, never admit mistakes, never be in doubt, ever. No flip-flopping, just tough it out. If you ever are called a liar, just ignore it. Make no comment and eventually everyone will forget. These disturbing thoughts of obfuscation caused a huge orange egg to reappear prophetically from GW's chickenoid hatching. Blind to the oracle, as principal owner of Godco Gas Imperial Oil Corporation, GW proudly announced a universal, everlasting, preemptive, wholly ordained war crusade on everything in the universe in the name of God, gas, oil, money, mommy, daddy, and shareholders of country pie. Pumped up on high-octane rooster juice and pretzels, with bum advice from the pro-life advisors, in the mother of all blunders, GW jumped chicken feet first into the big fat oil patch and incidentally allowed his arch rival phantom o someone to escape once more that proved coincidentally beneficial however since it guaranteed plenty of threatening videotapes for the ongoing television serials called news reports used to control the greater peeper population Fire Egg Bat and Maggot Mom showed up just in time for GW's final indoctrination before the all-out assault on language and reason he was about to launch. Three more pro-life advisors known fearfully as the Big D Stooges of Death, Ditto, Ditto, and Ditto, also joined the last big coaching session. They complimented GW on his brilliant move to use stupidity for a cover. 
Well, high jolly bushwhacker, you are the master of bluff and violence, with a great poker face and the mental messianic vacancy to back it up, right to the hilt of atomic war, ditto swore. Always do unto others before they can undo you, and never flinch. If we cannot have it all, we can at least deny it to everyone else. We can hijack the government by appealing to the right wing feathered flaggots, the chicken hearts of religious bigotry who are our power base. Question the pedigree of their eggs or their foul orientation, and they fly into a squawking fit. That's when you know you have them on the edge of a self-boiling rage. Make them realize that freedom is a gun held to their head. They are free to resist, but they will soon be dead. Above all, you must keep them from waking from the horror-filled Orwellian war dreams that produce post-traumatic stress disorder. Never let them know that feeling safe again is the first step toward healing PTSD. As long as they are off balance and unable to rest or think or see clearly, they cannot resist. But without blind terror, our cause is lost, Ditto gasped. Never forget, GW, the momentum of the masses is so great that over time a slight shift has enormous consequences. Tilt the mob even a little in your favor with fear and uncertainty and rule the world forever, Ditto hissed in a furor. Shock and awe, the invasion celebration, kicked off just as anticipated on all major planetary networks for some really big bucks fewer ratings. Hugely inflated by the Aryan bombing campaign that plowed the earth and made it fertile again for opium poppies, and encouraged by his unresisted stomping around in the world at large, GW boldly invaded Babylon, homeland of yet another evil doer. In order to get all the oil, eliminate even a dream of fictitious WMD, and spread neo-democracy, GW had the fun but tough job of deciding how to blow away countless lives of all colors and shapes, and spread radioactive fires, guns, bombs, jets, missiles, mistrust, corruption, and lots of really pissed off resistance fighters all over the place. This is only a preview of the Armageddon World Super Bowl, so don't change horses or channels in the midst of apocalypse, he swaggered. This is our chance to teach the world to embrace collateral damage and accept our plan to fix the global population situation by cutting the number of occupants in half one country at a time. It only makes sense to start with the weakest and work up to the big boys last. By then, there will be enough to go around for all who are left. While we're at it, we can easily conquer the enemy without filling a lot of jails by killing everyone, including evil babies and their mothers. Starve them, poison them, bomb them in their cribs, in the hospitals, and down in the air raid shelters where they hide from us and wail. If you falter and begin to think of those trapped inside that fiery nightmare, remember that if you're in the bomb biz like us, then no matter where they land, we make plenty of money and provide an essential fair market service as well. So get over it and on with the show. More cruise missiles if you please. I love the way they sound coming down and those gold sparkly uranium bits are to die for. Oh boy what an extravaganza worth every penny of your tax dollars. I'm sure glad we do this over there though and not over here. By the way, how is border security? GW asked, flashing a lurid leer. Del Norte WMD, famous missing evidence, remained hidden until a fateful incident on the Rio Pollo exposed a fundamental flaw in GW Chicken Little's grand plan. Feeling puffed up after successfully destroying a second defenseless country with almost no blowback, GW went to an old, familiar, good times, red light, pen of hens frontier hangout for some well-deserved macho R&R. Mission accomplished! Mission accomplished! The world is mine, he whined, stumbling through dark alleys of twisted deceit. Suddenly and without warning, he was attacked by terrorist scissors drones that immediately revealed his sinister offensiveness. Scared senseless, GW raised the threat level to red, yellow, and green all at once just to be on the safe side and confuse everyone. 
after several snippy aliens breached the Wallow Missile's defense system, he belatedly whipped out his own secret WMD and blasted away at the enemy penetrators. He fired impotently until his flagging ammunition was spent. Then a scissor swiftly rendered him a common capon, and with a spiteful, chicken-headed, knee-jerk ejaculation, he croaked for total all-out nuclear retaliation. Smart bombs, aptly named, rained down in profusion as the sky really began to fall after all in a self-fulfilling prophecy. The scissors castration attack caused GW to have a severe Viagra flashback in which he thought he was still big cock on the walk. Confused and distracted by intense pain and his own death angel looming upon him, he forgot that all the smart bombs were programmed to target evildoers. You stupid chicken! Now look what you've done! shouted the pro-life advisors as they saw what was coming and tried to split before the big show opened. In truth, like a blast from the frozen past, the witch came first was simply coming home to roost. Really, why did the chicken cross the border so many times he can't remember, when he was supposed to be flying jet airplanes to protect us? This is a critical self-preservation question. What did he do there? Is he impaired? We have a right to know, and now, before he pushes any red-hot buttons and blows us all to bits of mutton, Chick Enlightenment, dim at best, came as the biggest bomb of all went off right inside GW's head. He had a fleeting moment of true enlightenment when he realized he had been double-crossed by the pro-life dudes. As he atomized, he briefly understood that all along he had only been working for the rapid extinction of his very own species under the ravenous guidance of chicken soul packers. His greed and desire for power and hatred of others not like himself delivered him right into the Skull Egg Bro's control. He saw that evil, which is historical and not natural, has no innate power but feeds parasitically on the hatred of others who willingly or otherwise lend it their own. Wars, he conceded, beget only wars, and the way to balance scores is to share equally. His money was gone, his flags were broken, his gun was jammed and his rod of false faith had deserted him. But unrepentant in the gathering darkness and deafening silence that followed the big blast, he still heard echoes of his precious neocon mantra slowly dying away. Me first, me first, me first, okay? Chicken Purgatory, short-term repository for soul trash, found GW laid out in limbo, reduced to irradiated ash while the pro-life advisors partied down on a mushroom cloud and showed off newly enhanced nanobot weapons for the terminal good versus evil TV wars. They did not even notice they too were heavily irradiated and that genetically modified bat babies were melting from the ongoing atomic conflagration sweeping the world. Nemesis and Maggot Mom, the red-eyed flies, returned with their spawn to feast on GW's corrupted carcass. With his deep-fried head resting on a brimstone pillow, Chicken Little's dissolving ego cried pitifully and pleaded for forgiveness and salvation, while true awareness, being indestructible, contemplated the final dispensation of chicken parts. Chicken Heaven, brightly feathered, beckoned to GW to awaken from his beleaguered dreams, and suddenly he thought he heard the celestial bells and cosmic chorus of well-meaning beings calling for him to arise. He flew up from the empty place of timeless waiting and soared toward the starry heavens he believed he was about to inhabit. Certainly for so loyal and grand a servant as himself, there would be a fine penthouse and a fabulous job as CEO of some part of the heavenly franchise. He was so giddy, he experienced what he took to be hatched again raptor rapture, an ascendancy to absolute chicken hawkhood. He cast off all ideas of foul power and wealth in preparation for his new place on the right hand of the great cluck itself. Unfortunately for GW, what he heard was not the ring of bells, but the rattle of chains on the legs of the pro-life advisors as they met their fate in the wise embrace of Ursa the bear and Leo the lion, ancient animal emissaries of all sentient beings. With grim but necessary natural efficiency, they finally brought justice with all due respect 
to GW and his whole pack of unmasked death masters. Chop, chop, ho, ho, it's to the dump they go. We'll crush their butts and eat their guts. Ho, 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 the bear hummed merrily. Chicken hell, their final stop, crackled and popped as the mental remnants of GW and the pro-life advisors were slowly rotisseried into crispy critters that screamed silently to themselves in the dark inferno. Hell is a very personal place, and so the diabolical land of endless torment conjured by the neocon chicken hawks for the damnation of their enemies became, of course, their home. After considerable corporate downsizing by Leo and Ursa, the roasted poultry and fellow travelers burned eternally in obsidian perdition, while the light at the end of the tunnel remained forever just beyond them. Cosmic Eye Docs, Ursa the Great and Leo the Mighty, after such a long and destructive epidemic of willful blindness, skillfully performed corrective eye surgery to repair the cosmic outlook and restore transparent visions of balance and truth. They never worried, however, for they knew life is bigger and stronger, more beautiful and intelligent than all the neocon chicken hawks that ever lived, and entirely able to heal itself after removing offending irritations. In the great cycles of universal evolution, from time to time the mind fills with ideas of good and evil and then empties like a bottle. But the all is always full, and knows full well the lonely truth. Not only is there no final solution, there is in fact no problem. This fable is mostly fictitious, so any misresemblance to foul beings, living or dead, is purely coincidental. The stars which appear to be real are brought to you courtesy of the Hubble telescope, and the nuclear detonations by the U.S. War Department are disturbingly surreal. The fable itself is based upon a wealth of archetypal dreams, so if it fits, wear it proudly and always in good health. Sincerely, Jaime Huesos.